Merhabalar tekrar, hoş geldiniz. Öncelikle okulumuzla ilgili kısa bir video gösterim olacak. Ardından sunumumuz olacak. Sunumdan sonra gastrosu çovumuz başlayacak olup eğitim programlarımızla ilgili sorularınız olursa lütfen chatten bize iletiniz. Welcome. First of all, there will be a short video and then we will have a presentation about our school. After the presentation, Castro Show will start. If you have any questions about our programs, please write to chat. Teknik kreativity, perfection, discipline, professionalism, tradition. yılında Paris'te kurulan Le Cordon Bleu Mutfak Sanatları Okulu günümüzde 20 ülkede 35 aşkın uluslararası okulda yılda 20 bin öğrenciye eğitim vermektedir. 2012 senesinde Özyeğin Üniversitesi ve Le Cordon Bleu arasında imzalanan anlaşma çerçevesinde Özyeğin Üniversitesi gastronomi ve mutfak sanatları lisans öğrencilerini dünyanın en usta şefleriyle yetiştirirken Le Cordon Bleu'de açtığı sertifika programları ile bu alanda kendini geliştirmek ve ilerlemek isteyen kişilere yeni bir geleceğin kapılarını açmaktadır. Le Cordon Bleu, founded in 1895, currently is present in 20 countries with more than 35 international schools attended by 20,000 students annually. Özyeğin University and Le Cordon Bleu signed a partnership agreement in July 2012. In the frame of this partnership, Özyeğin University Gastronomy and Culinary Arts License Program students, as well as Le Cordon Bleu Certificate students, are receiving very strong culinary education from experienced international chefs. Le Cordon Bleu doors are open to anyone inside or outside of the industry who wants to improve themselves in the culinary arts world by the teaching of Le Cordon Bleu chefs using the Le Cordon Bleu training modules. Le Cordon Bleu Istanbul, 220 bin metrekareyi aşan prestijli Özyeğin Üniversitesi kampüsünde yer almaktadır. 
Kampüs Asya yakasındadır. Toplu taşıma araçlarıyla ve şehir merkezi noktalarından günde birkaç kez üniversite servisiyle kolayca ulaşılabilir. Öğrenciler 2626 yatak kapasiteli yurtların yanı sıra kampüs içinde yer alan yarı olimpik kapalı havuz, kütüphane, yemek mekanları ve spor olanaklarından da yararlanabilmektedir. Le Cordon Bleu Istanbul is located in the reputable Özin University campus, which is over 220,000 square meters. The campus is located on the Asian side and easily reachable through public transportation. There is also a university shuttle between the city center and the campus several times a day. And students can benefit from 2,626 bed capacity dorms along with sport facilities, including half Olympic indoor pool, library, food outlets within the campus. İstanbul, geleneksel lokantalardan, lüks fine dining restoranlara, büyülü mısır çarşısından, zengin balık tezgahlarına ve renkli taze pazarlara kadar çeşitli deneyimler sunuyor. Çok yönlülük bu şehirde sınır tanımıyor. İstanbul offers a variety of experiences from traditional diners to luxury fine dining restaurants, from magical spice bazaar to rich fish stands and to colorful fresh markets. Versatility has no borders in this city. Le Cordon Bleu öğrencilerine 3650 metrekarenin üzerinde son teknoloji tesisler sunmaktadır. Teori derslerinin yapıldığı mutfak altı yapılı gastrodotoryum ve uygulamalı derslikler yer almaktadır. Le Cordon Bleu offers state-of-the-art facilities. Over 3,650 square meter consisting of an, of an auditorium with culinary infrastructure for theory courses and practical culinary classes. Le Cordon Bleu çeşitli eğitim imkanları sunmaktadır. Uzun dönem profesyonel sertifika programlarımız olan mutfak ve pastacılık programlarımız temel, orta ve üstün olmak üzere 3 seviyeden oluşmaktadır ve her biri 11 hafta sürmektedir. 3 seviye mutfak eğitimini başarıyla tamamlayan öğrenci diplomda küzin, 3 seviye pastacılık eğitimini başarıyla tamamlayan öğrenci diplomda patisari sertifikalarını almaya hak kazanır. 3 seviye mutfak ve pastacılık eğitimlerini başarıyla bitiren öğrencilerimiz ise uluslararası prestije sahip Grand Diplom sertifikasını alarak okulumuzdan mezun olur. Le Cordon Bleu offers variety of programs. Both patisserie and cuisine programs consist of three stages. Basic, Intermediate, Superior. Certificate programs, each lasting 11 weeks. Students can either attend three stages independently or complete the entire program. Those who complete all three stages will be granted by Diplôme de Patisserie or Diplôme de Cuisine. In case of completing both programs in all three stages, one would graduate with a grant diploma. Grand Diplôme Certificasını görebilirsiniz. Here is a picture of a grand diploma. 24 Ocak 2022'de ilk kez açılacak olan Türk Mutfağı programı, Le Cordon Bleu'nun mutfak sanatları eğitimindeki 125 yıllık tecrübesi ve disiplinini Türk mutfak teknikleri ve reçetelerine uyarlayarak oluşturulmuş çok yönlü bir programdır. Le Cordon Bleu şefleri ve misafir şefler tarafından verilecek olan zengin ürün içeriği, köklü geçmişi, derin kültürü ve yüzyıllarca korunmuş reçetelere sahip Türk mutfağı programı İngilizce ve gösterim dersleri de Türkçe'ye çevrilecek şekilde çift dilde verilecektir. Uygulama seansları, gösterimler, kuram dersleri ve saha gezilerinden oluşan bu kapsamlı program iki seviyeden oluşmaktadır. Birinci seviye olan klasik Türk mutfağı eğitimini başarıyla bitiren öğrenciler sertifikatlı küzin Türk belgesini almaya hak kazanırlar. İkinci seviye olan Türk bölgesel mutfak eğitimini başarıyla bitiren öğrenciler sertifika da Küzin Türk Rejyonel belgesi almaya hak kazanırlar. Her biri günde 6 saat, haftada 2 gün ve toplamda 120 saat olan her iki seviyeyi başarıyla tamamlayan öğrencilere diplom da Küzin Türk belgesi verilir. Turkish Cuisine Program to be opened for the first time on 24th of January 2022 is a versatile program of Turkish culinary techniques and recipes with Le Cordon Bleu, 125 years of experience and discipline in culinary art education.
The Turkish cuisine program offers a rich content through exquisite techniques and recipes preserved over centuries and through lectures on Turkish culinary heritage. The courses will be given by Le Cordon Bleu chef instructors and guest chefs in English, and the demonstration lessons will be translated into Turkish. This comprehensive program will have two levels, consisting of practice sessions, demonstrations, theory lessons, and field trips. Students who successfully complete the first level, classical Turkish cuisine, are entitled to receive the Certificat de Cuisine Turk. Students who successfully complete the second level, Turkish regional cuisine, are entitled to receive the Certificat de Cuisine Turk Régional. Diplôme de Cuisine Turk Certificate is given to students who successfully complete both levels, each of which being six hours a day, two days a week, and a total of 120 hours in total. Le Cordon Bleu'de uzun dönem profesyonel sertifika programları haricinde yoğunlaştırılmış ekmekçilik, çikolata ve şekerleme, hafta sonu mutfak programı, kurum ve kişilere özel hazırlanan tailor-made kurslar ve workshoplar da mevcuttur. Le Cordon Bleu also offers courses like intensive bakery, chocolate and confectionery, weekend cuisine program, and tailor-made courses both at personal and corporate level. Le Cordon Bleu'nün uzman şefleri önderliğinde size çikolatanın sırlarını, tariflerini ve tekniklerini öğretmek için tasarlanmış çikolata ve şekerlemeye giriş programı 13 Aralık'ta başlayacaktır. Bu programa katılarak temperleme sanatını keşfedin ve sektörde önemli bir yeri olan geleneksel ve modern teknikleri öğren- öğrenin. Ekmekçiliğin tüm inceliklerini, reçete ve tekniklerini Le Cordon Bleu Master şeflerinden öğreneceğiniz 10 günlük 60 saatten oluşan yoğunlaştırılmış ekmekçilik programı da 10 Ocak 2022'de başlayacaktır. Chocolate and Confectionery program designed to teach you the secrets recipes and techniques of chocolate under the guidance of Le Cordon Bleu Master Chefs will begin on 13th of December. By participating in this program, discover the art of tempering and learn both traditional and modern techniques that are essential in the industry. 10 days, 60 hours long intensive bakery program designed to teach you the secrets, recipes and techniques of boulangerie under the guidance of Le Cordon Bleu Master Chefs will start on 10th of January 2022. Okulumuzda eğitim alan öğrenciler, ikisi İsviçre'den, biri İtalya'dan, biri Fransa'dan, biri Belçika'dan ve biri Türkiye'den olmak üzere uluslararası Le Cordon Bleu Master şeflerinden eğitim alma fırsatına sahiptir. Kurslar İngilizce olup Türkçe'ye çevrilmektedir. Students have the opportunity to learn from a diverse group of international Le Cordon Bleu Master chefs. Being two Swiss, one Italian, one French, one Belgian, and one Turkish. The courses are held in English and translated into Turkish. Bizi dinlediğiniz için teşekkür ederiz. Eğitim programlarımızla ilgili sorunuz olursa lütfen çete yazınız. Thank you for listening to us. If you have any questions about about our programs, please write to chat. Merhabalar tekrar. Etkinliğimiz etkinliğimizde ilk olarak Le Cordon Bleu Paris mezunu Vanessa Catherine kurucusu ve şefi Vanessa Menasa Parhi konuk olarak eğitim ve kariyer sü- süreçlerini sizlerle paylaşacak. İkinci bölümde ise Le Cordon Bleu İstanbul eğitmen şefimiz Luca de Astis Contre Souffle reçetesinin yapımını ve sunumunu paylaşacak. Bu gastro show'da mutfak tekniklerini öğrenme ve Le Cordon Bleu Master Chef'lerinin ipuçları alma fırsatına sahip olacaksınız. First, Le Cordon Bleu Paris alumna Vanessa Catering, chef and owner Vanessa Menese Farhi will share her educational and career journey with you. And in the second part, Le Cordon Bleu instructor chef Le Astis will be presenting the Cointre Souffle recipe in detail. You will learn the culinary techniques and tips of Le Cordon Bleu Master Chef. Konuğumuzun sunumunu İngilizce dinlemek isterseniz Zoom ekranınızda yer alan çeviri butonundan Türkçe, Türkçe'yi e, seçebilirsiniz. Sorularınızı chat kısmından bize iletebilirsiniz. Öncelikle sözü Rima Hanım'a ardından Vanessa Şef'e vermek isterim. 
If you want to listen to our alumnus chat in English, please choose Turkish from the interpretation button on your Zoom screen and you can listen in English. You can send your questions through the chat. Welcome again, Vanessa Chef. Vanessa Chef'im, hoş geldiniz. Merhabalar, ee, hoş bulduk. Le Cordon Bleu İstanbul e, olarak e, sizin de e, Le Cordon Bleu Grand Diplom eğitimi tamamladınız ve mezun olduğunuz için bizimle e, hem eğitim süresindeki deneyimlerinizi hem de ardından kariyerinizde e, neler yaptığınızı anlatırsanız e, dinlemekten çok büyük keyif alacağız. Tabii ki. Ee, öncelikle herkese merhaba. Ee, 2009 senesinde İstanbul Teknik Üniversitesi ve State University of New York İşletme Mühendisliği bölümünden mezun olduktan sonra e, Türk İstanbul'da e, Yeniköy tarafında bir balıkçıda işletmeci olarak çalışmaya başladım. E, aslında amacım bir restoran açmaktı. E, fakat o süre zarfında e, mutfağı da öğrenmem gerektiğine karar verdim. Ve Cordon Bleu'ya gitmek istedim. E, dünyada hani en iyi aşçılık eğitimini veren Okul Cordon olduğu için Cordon Bleu Paris'e gittim. O zaman İstanbul'da Cordon Bleu yoktu. Ve 2010 başında, 2010 Ocak ayında Cordon Bleu Paris'e Grand Diplom yapmaya gittim. E, okulu bitirdikten sonra geri döndüm ve bu süre zarfında e, aşçılığa aşık oldum. E, geri döndükten sonra önce tabiri caizse evden e, eşe dosta, işte croissant, pasta gibi ürünleri yapmaya başladım. Çok kısa sürede e, kendime bir yer açtım. Bebek tarafında yaklaşık 4 sene boyunca ortaklarımla beraber devam ettim. Daha sonra orayı ortaklarıma devrettikten sonra hem ortağım hem abim olan Elim Enes ile beraber Vanessa Catering'i kurduk 2015 senesinde. 6 senedir de Vanessa Catering'den devam ediyoruz. Vanessa Catering olarak şu anda hem kurumsal alanda yönetim kurulu toplantıları, defileler, daha özel gösterim olan davetleri yapıyoruz. Ee, özel alanda düğünler, nişanlar, doğum günleri e, gibi davetlere servis veriyoruz. Ee, kariyerimi bu şekilde devam ettirdim. Ee, Cordon Bleu tarafına gelince, Cordon Bleu'da hani en, en, en çok sevdiğim şey şuydu. Orada öğrendiğimiz e, tariflerden daha çok aslında mutfağın gerçekten disiplinini öğreniyorsunuz Cordon Bleu'da. Bir mutfakta nasıl çalışılması gerektiğini ve nasıl devam edilmesi gerektiğini öğreniyorsunuz. O yüzden ben Cordon Bleu'yu bir okul değil bir hayat olarak görmüştüm. Ve gerçekten hayatımda çok büyük değişimler sağladı Cordon Bleu. Sadece mutfak anlamı değil, komple bütün hayat anlamında. Ee, bu şekilde anlatabilirim. Vanessa Şef'im çok teşekkür ediyoruz e, bizim neden eğimlerinizi paylaştığınız için. En evet. kısa sürede sizi e, kampüsümüzde de ağırlamak isteriz. E, ayrıca e, güzel e, çalışmalarınızı da takip ediyoruz ve e, bundan böyle Le Cordon Bleu İstanbul izleyicilerimiz de sizi yakından takip edecektir diye düşünüyorum. Çok teşekkür ederiz. Kendinize çok iyi bakın. Şimdi e, Luca Şef'in e, sunumuna geçeceğiz. E, onunla ilgili olarak duyurularımızı yapalım Duygu Hanım'la birlikte. Tamamdır. Çok teşekkürler. Görüşmek üzere. Çok teşekkür ederiz Vanessa Şef'im. Sağ olun. Etkinliğimiz İngilizce olarak devam edecektir. Zoom ekranınızda yer alan çeviri butonundan İngilizceyi seçerseniz İngilizce, Türkçeyi seçerseniz Türkçe çeviriyi dinleyebilirsiniz. Sorularınızı chat kısmından bize ve şefe iletebilirsiniz. Our event will continue in English. If you choose English from the interpretation button on your Zoom screen, you can listen in English. If you choose Turkish, you can listen to Turkish translation. You can send your questions through the chat. I would like to give the floor to Chef Luca de Astis to present the gastro show. Okay, welcome to everyone. Welcome to all of you to come to visit us. Welcome to our friends that are at home watching the this gastro show on their sofa comfortably. But unfortunately for them, they cannot try the souffle at the end of the of the class. So today we're going to prepare for you a nice uh, souffle au Cointreau. Cointreau is a, a triple sec liqueur, orange flavor, that uh, had been uh, produced or uh, is still produced uh, in France. Okay, the Cointreau distillery had been uh, uh, established in uh, 1849 in Saint-Bartholomew d'Anjou, so in the 
Marne and Loire department, the west of France. And uh, since then, it's been a, a big hit. Uh, so today we're going to prepare this recipe that is, uh, it's easy, but still requires some attention. Okay. So let's start. First of all, I prepared over here. So since you asked before, so here I have uh, orange juice and uh, the skin, uh, grated skin of the orange that I make reduce till a syrup texture. This one is, well, is gonna give me extra intensity in terms of flavor. So just to have that nice uh, smell of orange, since uh, I use uh, and take advantage of all the essential oil in the skin of the orange. Okay, so this is one. Souffle in French means uh, to blow, like to blow a balloon, souffle. Why? Because uh, we have uh, this uh, small cake that inflate in the oven thanks to the uh, expansion of the bubble air that uh, we're going to produce now with the uh, egg white. Okay, so let's start first of all with the base of our souffle, which is a, a classical pastry cream. Okay, so here I have the milk in which I'm going to add the half of the sugar. And I start to warm it up. In this bowl, I'm going to add five egg yolk. and the rest of the sugar. And now I start to whisk together. What is important when we do this one is that uh, when I mix the sugar with the egg yolk, I need to whisk right away. Otherwise what happens is that uh, the yolk start to cure, start uh, the, um, the, the sugar start to cure uh, like, like cooking the egg yolk. And then after I'm gonna have a small spot of uh, egg yolk, a sort of coagulation of egg yolk, okay? That I'm gonna have inside my pastry cream. And this is what you don't want. Now I'm applying a technique that is called in French, blanchir. Means to whitening. Uh, that one is just the fact to mix together and the color, let's say it become lighter, okay? So just mix. This is done. So now, I'm gonna introduce, I'm gonna add in this uh, base, uh, flour and cornstarch. I sift it. All right. In the meanwhile, I place my oven 220 degrees, okay, for after, for cooking the souffle. So now that I have my mix ready, I can add the warm milk. Now I dilute, I dilute my base.
make sure that I recuperate everything. All right. Now I place back everything in my pan and I go to cook my pastry cream. Here always whiskey. Filler, nice and cooked. I'm sure everyone of you did once, huh? You cook the pastry cream once? So, of course. Now, something that I'm gonna show you today is uh, the classical French souffle. That you don't have to confuse with uh, what many restaurants call uh, souffle, but refer to the lava cake. It's not the same. It's different. Because the lava cake, imply the usage of a chocolate, okay? While the souffle has a many variations. It can be savory, so we can make a cheese souffle, potato souffle, spinach souffle, and then we have all the sweet versions, like that one that we are doing today. Raspberry, chocolate, uh, Cointreau, orange, uh, dry fruit, okay? Plus the lava cake, when you when you scoop, you take out from the mold in general. And uh, the uh, the contrary, the um, the souffle is always served in the same uh, ramekin. Okay, so that one is the main difference. Okay, so if someone uh, asks you or serve you a lava cake instead of souffle, is the you make it wrong. Okay. Okay, my pastry cream is done. Okay, I just all right. Here is uh, the nice pastry cream. Now it's very important that I place my pastry cream to chill immediately. Okay, so. I place my pastry cream here on a flat uh, tray, okay? And then I will put a stretch film, stretch film in contact. So this is why, because it will allow me to avoid to have a, a pellicle that after I might find inside the, the, inside the, the, the pastry cream while I will uh, prepare the base of the, Now, so the secret of the good souffle is that you have a nice and cold base. Of course, uh, if you want to do a ton, the best thing is always to prepare it, the pastry cream one day before. Uh, or maybe you prepare in the morning for the evening. The fact, the fact that I spread it on the gastronome is just to chill faster. That's it. There is no other reason. All right. And that one goes in the fridge. Okay. Where I have the Cointreau that we're gonna add later on. 
The reason why I added the control after is, be, is because that if I incorporate while my pastry cream is cooking, the alcohol will evaporate. So I will not have that intensity that I'm looking for. Okay, so I will add later on. Okay, there, so here. Just allow me to clean. All right. What is important for the souffle is that these are small uh, containers that are called ramekin, or somewhere else they call it a uh, souffle cup, as the typical shape. Uh, so now what we do, what we're gonna do is a technique. We apply a technique that is called chemise which literally translate is, it means to put a chemise. Chemise is, a, is a, a shirt, okay? But now what we're gonna do, we just spread butter and sugar around the, this mold. We have a two purpose for this action. The first one is that uh, adding the sugar, we're gonna give a, a nice flavor, nice crunchy texture to our souffle once it will rise. And the second, the butter, is going to help the, the, the mix of the souffle growing because melting, so the fat is going to melt. So the souffle, let's say that is light easily up. So now we're going to prepare this one. I'm going to show you how to do. It's very simple. We have a butter at room temperature. So we just take a little bit of butter here. Uh, and we start to spread the, the butter all around. Now, something very important that I'm doing it is uh, I brush, uh, I brush the butter on the edge from the bottom till up in the way the, in the way the souffle will rise. All right. Okay, once I did this one, I place sugar inside the mold and I just turn, okay? Once I did this one, just shake it off and here I have my mold ready. What I'm gonna do now, I just make sure that uh, I clean the edges. And now we'll go with the second one. And I clean the edge. Why is it important to clean the edge every time? Because otherwise the souffle, because otherwise if the sugar will leave sugar on the edges, the souffle rising, okay, is gonna cook and stick with that sugar. So my souffle instead to go straight, it's gonna come out on one side or the other, okay? So the success of a good souffle is uh, how, is, how straight it comes. Of course, enough and it, it tries. We cannot have a souffle that just go half, okay? So here we have uh, our ramekin ready. We place it back in the fridge.
now my pastry cream now it's uh, still a little bit warm but what the, have you seen that um, how is the steel shine the pastry cream this one because i put a stretch film otherwise what happened the surface is going to dry and when i will knock it down to make it softer so the i cannot break completely the crust and i'm gonna have a small lumps in, inside my pastry cream that one is the purpose of the stretch film on contact it works with the bechamel or any kind of other thick uh, or any any other of a uh, uh, thick preparation okay so now for this reason i prepare a bowl in the fridge and a bowl of water with the ice the only reason why i do this one is just to accelerate the process there is no special uh, purpose as i said if you want to try to make a souffle at home you can prepare your pastry cream either in the morning for in the for the evening or either today for tomorrow okay so now i'm going to knock down the pastry cream So what does it mean knock down? To give a, a creamier texture, okay? To make it softer. All right. Now to my pasty cream, I'm going to add the Cointreau. All right, to that, I'm going to add uh, this uh, orange syrup. And finally, I'm going to add this uh, orange. This is, uh, these are candy orange. Okay, so they are uh, orange skin that have been cooking syrup for a long time till it becomes soft. I'm sure that all of you try sometimes in some biscuit or some cakes that we macerate. So it means we marinate with Cointreau. Okay, so then. I add inside.
Okay. I think that now I reach the right temperature. All right. And uh, the last things that I need to add them uh, is a uh, egg yolk. Egg Yes, three egg yolks. Why I add egg yolk? Because the egg yolk is going to help me to give a better structure, a stronger structure to my souffle. Inside. It's very important for you to know that for every time we do a, a souffle, is always this base that wait for the egg yolk. Sorry, for the for the meringue that we're gonna prepare. Okay, because otherwise, if I prepare before the meringue and after my base, the meringue is gonna go in down. And then if I over whip, the meringue is become very hard, and then it's gonna have small lumps. Okay, and then what happened is that my my my souffle is, is not going to have that uh, gooey and smooth texture because we have all these smaller lumps inside. Okay, so this one, my base is done and goes. I keep it here. Now we go with them. I prepare my meringue. When we prepare a meringue, what is important is that uh, we do not uh, add the sugar too early. The reason why is that if I add the sugar now, eventually I'm gonna have a meringue, but uh, it's not gonna have the right texture. It's gonna have a, a creamier texture. This is why, because the sugar goes to make uh, um, my, my egg white thicker. So, when I, when I continue to, to whisk, I don't gonna have that nice and hairy meringue. So what I'm gonna do, I start to whisk the meringue without anything now, okay? I have a, a pinch of salt. The salt, uh, it helps to have um, liquid uh, a, a egg yolk, egg white, a little bit more liquid. And uh, will allow me to have a smoother meringue. Okay, that one is what we are looking for in a nice souffle. See how it's coming out. Soon uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be ready. So then I'm gonna start to to add the sugar. Now, when I can start to add the sugar, I add half of the sugar. And I add 
the other part of the sugar. All right. This one is called medium stiff because it's not hard. Okay, if I, if I continue to whisk, it's gonna become harder. So you see the spout is gonna be straight, okay? This one is what we are looking for, okay? All right, so now, now it's coming the nice part. This one. I don't need it anymore. Now I need to incorporate the egg white in the base, okay? And I do that on in three times. So the first, uh, the first one, I add and I whisk and I mix with the whisk. The second one and the third one I do with the spatula. This is why, because the first one, it tell me to have, a, to make the texture similar, very similar. And now when I add the rest of the meringue, so then I don't want to lose, I don't want that the meringue fall down, okay? I don't want to lose all the air that I put inside there. All right. This one, and then I incorporate the rest. All right. My souffle dough here is ready. Now I need to start to fill up the ramekin. Now I need this spatula. Now I need to start to fill up the ramekin till up. Like this. Once I do this one, I need to flatten.
All right. Now we have another task to do. So once we do this one, we need to clean the edge of the souffle. The reason why I flatten the surface is because I want to have a flat surface when the souffle is coming up. So nice and regular. So the, the second task that I need to do is just to pass the paper or my finger on the Ramekin. That one is to make sure to do not have um, any obstacle that will prevent my souffle to cook to grow straight. You see, I just clean up the edges to make sure that there is no sugar, there is no uh, dough that stay there and it will uh, keep it down my souffle. And the last one. All right, here is our souffle. Now I go in the oven. Now it's 220. I need it very hot. And now I put the temperature 200 for. Uh, 13 minutes. From now on, there is nothing else in my hands. So now we're gonna see if the souffle is gonna come out nice or not. Okay. As you can see, the preparation of this dish is not very complicated. However, like everything requires a little technique and a little knowledge. Okay. Do you have any questions? We have a 13 minutes to occupy. So if you want to talk about the souffle or something else, please let me know. Uh, so would you, would you try to do that at home this weekend? Huh? You have the recipe with you? Huh? After, the After the exams. I I would do before the exam. So it's gonna, huh? <laughs> so in that case, uh, if you don't have a question, allow me to clean a little bit. So then after we can present our souffle. Oh, in the meanwhile, you can think about it. A question, if you have it. Yes. There, there are six, because we're planning to have two. <laughs> yes, there we have a six, six ramekin. Another important thing on the souffle, we remove the fan. The reason why if we have a fan working, 
So then it generates a sort of current. So if my souffle is struggling to come up, so then there is a, the air is coming from one side, it will prevent it to make it to make it straight. So it's always better to use a, a static oven. Okay, and very important, do not open the oven while the souffle is cooking. That one is crucial. Huh? Any other questions? Please. Yes. Uh, after the yes. The important is that the yolk is going to give you the, the souffle as a very little support. Because how it works. The souffle is cooking now. So there is the air that is expanding. Okay. So while it is expanding, the proteins that's coming from the egg yolk and from the base, so from the flour and the cornstarch that they put, they will cook. So they will trap these bubbles, okay? The fact to add the egg yolk after is just to make the base stronger. However, the souffle in general, uh, this one is a dessert, for example, that uh, now, in, for example, in France and other places in, in the world, so only restaurants that have a big brigade, they can, uh, let's say, afford to do it. Because it's a dessert it needs to be done by the order. I cannot prepare it before. So when it's coming uh, the order, okay, two desserts, one souffle, one something. So the, the pastry cook, so start to make the souffle. Because the that one is not, uh, there are other way to make it work. So that one now is a little bit more technique. You can use a patachou as a, uh, patashu as a base. The patashu, for, for to make you understand, is uh, for the uh, is the same dough that uh, you use when you make profiterole. You know this small shoe is called shoe. That one is the, the dough is called patashu. So that one will offer a little bit more uh, uh, help to the to the souffle. But uh, otherwise, the souffle is just uh, this one. For example, let's say that uh, to make a general to give you a general picture of that. The savory souffle are based on uh, bechamel, and the, savory, the sweet souffle, pastry cream. So that one is, of course, you can make many others, but let's say that in general is always used like that. Bechamel is a sort of a savory pastry cream because it's always butter, flour, milk. There's no egg and sugar, but uh, that, one, uh, that one is what is it. So yeah. And so today also many, many restaurants that doesn't do anymore because that one require people as well. And now also the brigade now is uh, they're working more on frozen, on, uh, on different kinds of technique. But that one is the classic uh, way to make a souffle. And by the way, it's one of my favorite dessert. So I reply to your question. Excellent. Someone else? Anyway, I'm sure that you can do home for your family, for your fa for your parents. Uh, this souffle you can serve with a with a nice uh, ice cream on the side. Uh, you can serve with nice uh, uh, cream of uh, or coulis of uh, red fruit, uh, pistachio ice cream, uh, raspberry sorbet, raspberry. Uh, sorry, orange sorbet, orange ice cream. So it's always good to have uh, some candy fruit, for example, some poached pear or caramelized pears. Uh, so that one, is, uh, that one is the beauty of cooking, okay? So our souffle are cooking. So any other questions? No? Yes. My favorite dessert. One is this one, souffle in general. Otherwise, uh, I'm, uh, I like very much. Uh... Yes, of course, that there is a liqueur inside. So Cointreau is a triple sec, triple sec liqueur. Uh, Milfei, for example. Uh, Eclair. I'm not really a sweet guy. I like just uh, 
very small things. I'm, if you put in front of me, uh, I don't know, a nice cake and uh, I don't know, a sandwich, I go for sandwich. So I'm savory, savory, savory, savory. Someone else, some other questions? Yes. It's depending what uh, what uh, in which mood I am. So sometimes when uh, when I have to cook for myself, if my family is not at home, uh, I just cook, I just boil some pasta with some parmesan, and that's it. Some other times, uh, the contrary, I'm really. I go to the market and, uh, you know, I make maybe a vegetable curry or chicken curry or uh, is, is depending or, or maybe chickpeas is depending from uh, some sometimes also salad is a uh, I cannot say that there is something that I really like it's just a moment no now I really for example when I was in. Uh, in, when we were in pandemic, I was really, I want to eat, really want to eat sushi, but good sushi. So, so I have to wait. Yes. It's only for the flavor. You can use uh, whatever kind of. Uh, liquor you you like you can make also a brandy souffle you can make a, i don't know a champagne souffle there is no the quantro here is just a, um we use it for the flavor but also we use it to push the flavor of the oranges because the quantro is done is the distillation with alcohol and peel of orange regular orange and bitter orange so it's just help to, for example, if I want, if I would like to do a fennel souffle, I can use a fennel, I can use a fennel seeds, and I can use rake, for example. Rake is because it has a beta anise fennel flavor, so it's just to help to, to push the flavor of the, of the product that I'm using. Mm. If I have now vegetarian or vegan, vegetarian. vegetarian. So of course you can use a, a, but this is is vegetarian. This is a vegetarian. I, it's depending if they eat an eggs or, or not. Otherwise, you can make a, you can also use a, as a bechamel as a as a base. Make a bechamel. You can also add sugar inside. So you make a sort of a, of a sweet bechamel. And then after you can add whatever you wish. Can we add? Chickpeas. Chickpeas juice. I think yes. I never tried, but uh, I think yes, there is no problem. You can actually, you can use whatever you want. The, what, uh, what is important is to know the principle of the souffle, how it works. That one is the only thing. Yes. Uh, what is the other option for uh, alcohol? Do not put it alcohol. <laughs> no, but for example, the, the way I did it for the, for the, but for this recipe, you can also avoid to, you, you are not obliged to put the Cointreau. So then in that case, you're gonna make a, a orange uh, souffle. So that's it. It's only that on the alcohol. You you can you can work without alcohol. It's not a, it's not a must. Any other questions? Yes, please. Of course, of course, of course. So in that case, you use the uh, 
you use in one of our classes we have a raspberry a raspberry souffle so we use a, a pastry cream as a base and then we add uh, the puree of uh, raspberries for example or you can add the puree of uh, pears uh, ananas or you can add inside caramelized ananas instead of the uh, for example here i, I use uh, orange confit so you can use any kind of uh, any kind of uh, <coughs> sorry any kind of uh, fruit, definitely. Yes. Yes. Yes. Is always a souffle as a base, which is the the fat, which is a pastry cream in in the sweet one. Then you have the egg yolk that gives support, and then the egg white. But the base, so the fat, that one you can give the flavor that you want. Chocolate, apple, pears, uh, raspberries, blueberries, uh, name it. All right, this, uh, looks, is going, looks is going well. Think. For vegan, uh, yeah, you can uh, you can use uh, you can make a vegan uh, you can make a vegan um, pastry cream. Instead to use milk, you use vegetable milk, so nuts milk, for example, soya milk, and then uh, you use uh, more starch without uh, basically to make it vegetarian, vegan. Sorry, you make a, a sort of um, uh thick a cream without eggs adding more starch for example there is a so one cream that you do in turkey this my wife call it turkish pastry cream basically is a uh, the the milk with the starch and then she basically she cook it the same principle a little bit of a thick uh, sutlach okay so and then uh, instead to use the regular milk you use that one and then after you add whatever you wish now for the Egg, so that one, I have no answer for that. I don't think that is possible to make a souffle vegan because you, you require egg, you require the white egg. So it's complicated. Vegetarian, yes, but vegan, it's a little bit. Aha, uh... uh -huh. so what do you think? We will see. Uh, all right, so let me. Arrange uh, and prepare myself for presentation. Now, what is tricky about the souffle is always that one. For the reason, as I said, when in the restaurant, when they do it, you, you need to serve immediately. It can hold uh, one minute maximum, two. So it needs to be really fast. The souffle doesn't wait anyone. So when, for example, in a restaurant, there are two desserts, which one of these is the souffle, one dessert needs to be ready. So now my dessert is here. I take out the souffle, the waiter needs to go. All right. What about that? And then after what we are doing here, is a, this one. Leave the spatula and then make this nice line. And then we serve our souffle. Thank you. This one is for you to try. So please be careful because the ramekin is very hot.
Uh, voila. Does it look beautiful? Huh? So now my students are gonna help you to, to try. That one is the, the way we serve. Now here we can pour a sauce, something we can serve, a canelo of ice cream on the side. This one is the best. <laughs> right. Yelin, get out. So I invite you to do that at home. Huh? Try. Every month, we will do a series of gastro shows. Stay tuned for the details of our next gastro show. Thank you for your participation. We are looking forward to see you in, in our upcoming gastro show 